Okay, Stuart, we reached movies 21 through number 30, and here we go. I want my TV! It's my TV! And I want it now! I'm your host, Frank Ireland. I'm excited to be back. It's been a long time since I did the last video. It's been like four months. Basically, I challenged my friend Stuart to 101 movies to watch, and he's like, This is a pretty good paycheck. I'll do it. He's making videos, and I want to make videos as well to explain why I picked these movies. So let's get started. So number 21 on this movie list is Treasure Planet. Um, I remember this specifically coming out in 2002 because I remember they would advertise this movie with that trailer. It's a beautiful trailer. But this was at the time when things changed in my childhood where I realized I had to quote unquote grow up. Grow up! I remember in 2000, 2001, we were all kids. We all liked Captain Underpants. Shrek was a big movie. Everyone would quote that movie. And then, like, over a summer, I remember coming back to school, like, oh my god, did you read the new Super Diaper Baby? It's from the guy who created Captain Underpants. He's made this book. It's really funny. And everyone's like, no, I'm reading Harry Potter, and we're doing this stuff. And, oh, okay, I'm going to grow up, too. I'm a teenager as well. We're all going to grow up. Meanwhile, I'm just a kid, and the year before, like, 2001, Atlantis had just come out. So, you know those little, like, uh, plastic bottles that had, like, the little lobster thing on top? I would pretend that was the submarine from the movie Atlantis, and that was just the year before, so when 2002 came along with Treasure Planet, it was like, eh, I'm not into that, that looks dumb, what is it about, he's on the surfboard. It was also a big deal in my area because it, the music was by the Goo Goo Dolls. John Resnick from Buffalo, and I remember everyone made a big deal like, oh man, the Goo Goo Dolls are making music for a Disney movie, and I didn't see it in the theater. Because I was like, I'm growing up. I don't watch Disney movies anymore. I'm a grown-up. just a kid. Meanwhile, I should be enjoying these things, you know. And um, it flopped. I remember that being a big deal. Like, I think it was the, the most expensive Disney movie at the time. And it was a gamble because it's sort of like an original idea where it's like an original take on the, you know, Treasure Island concept. I wouldn't watch this until years later when... Um, in 2012, I was like, I want to watch all the Disney movies because I think I had made Sin City the Disney version. And I remember watching this and being very surprised and like very disappointed to myself that I never watched this as a kid. And it was really well done. And it's one of those ones where you just, you don't judge a book by its cover just because it looks weird and you don't want to watch it. And just because everyone else tells you like to grow up. You should still check things out, no matter what anyone says. If you say, like, oh, that's kid stuff, like, fuck that, go watch it. You know, if you want to watch it, go watch it. And um, <laughs> that's the reason why I picked it. And uh, I hope Stuart likes it as well, because I remember really digging the fuck out of this movie so much that I actually bought it. But yeah, that's the reason why it's on this list, and that's the reason why it's number 21. Don't judge a movie by its cover. Just go check it out. <laughs> So number 22 on this movie list is Sleuth. Why don't I just keep tapping you lightly on the head with a poker until the lamp comes up? Can't make a game out of real murder. We'll see. I know you're saying, Frank, you have a burnt copy there, you terrible, terrible person. But this DVD has been out of print for years. Me and my mom love supporting our local library. That's how we watch a lot of movies. We usually go there. If we miss it in the theater, we go to the library, we rent it out, we watch it that way. I got this from my local library. Support your local library. Get movies from them if you can. A couple years ago, we would rent all these movies, like a whole stack of movies, and we would just go through them like in the afternoon or during the weekend we just watch all these movies they were starting to phase out you know like vhs's and they were starting to get dvds and this is one of the early ones they got it was sleuth so um we rented it and we were pleasantly surprised we really liked it it has um lawrence olivier in it and michael kane you're mad you're a bloody mad you are a young man dressed as a clown about to be murdered of Anthony Schaffer's Tony Award winning play, Sleuth. It's basically a stage play as a movie. It's, it's pretty much it, but um, 
this movie just pretty much represents movies that we found through the library and just supporting your local library. Just going there and watching movies you've always wanted to watch or movies you haven't seen before. I would recommend people watching this if you could get a copy of it. I don't know how you would. I don't think it's available on digital or anything. I think I actually had to rip my own DVD and send it to Stuart for him to watch Sleuth. There is a remake that came out in 2007 which is pretty awful. I don't really like that movie at all. Um, this one has the best stuff in it. Michael Caine is fantastic in this. Go check out Sleuth if you can. It's number 22 on my list. <laughs> number 23 on this list is California Suite. Nothing could be more glamorous, more exciting, or more expensive than a weekend at the fabulous Beverly Hills Hotel in Neil Simon's California Suite. Now, California Suite is one of those ones we watched um, accidentally because um, there's a movie we've been wanting to watch. We forget which one it was because years ago, I'd say late 90s, we would rent movies from another library. We used to live in a different town and we would watch movies from there and one of them had something had to do with a hotel and it had Walter Matthau in it. We don't know what it's called still to this day. I think we're still trying to figure out. I think we knew Walter Matthau was in it. It took place in a hotel or a motel, something like that. It was a comedy and it was by Neil Simon. <laughs> so this one we rented from the library. I think we ordered it. We're like, okay. We looked up Walter Matthau. I was like, okay, so there's a movie called he was in called California Suite. It's got Walter Matthau on it. Maybe that's the movie we're talking about. And it's not, but it was a pleasant surprise because it's one of those movies they don't make anymore. I wish they did. But they don't. It's an ensemble piece that has tons of comedy actors of that time. You have Alan, Alan Alder, Michael Caine, Bill Cosby, Jane Fonda, Walter Matthau, Elaine May, Richard Pryor, and Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith and Michael Caine are my favorite part of this movie. Whenever the Oscars are on, I usually don't watch the Oscars anymore. I usually watch California Suite because it takes place on Oscar night. Uh, Maggie Smith has been nominated for an Oscar in this movie, in the movie, uh, and uh, Michael Caine is her husband, but... It turns out he's gay, and um, they're just basically best friends, but in that town, they look like a married couple, but meanwhile, he's t flirting with other actors in that town, and she feels very bad about that, because she genuinely loves him, and he loves her, but not in that way, and it's it's sad, and you just, it's like a day in the life, you just watch them on the, like, they, they're on the plane, they're going to the Oscars, and she's sort of, like, having, like, a midlife crisis. Was I hit by a bus? I look as though I was hit by a fully loaded guided tour bus. And meanwhile, that's just one of the stories in here. There's like uh, three other stories, maybe four other stories. You have Alan Alda with Jane Fonda in this movie, and they're talking about their uh, kid who ran away to live with him, and it's that whole different thing. And then you have Walter Matthau, who's just visiting, and he has his wife coming in town, and it turns out that she came in early and his brother, an asshole, rented this hooker for him and he's in bed with this hooker. I don't know if they slept together. I'm sure they did. But the wife catches them and there's a whole drama situation with that. Meanwhile, the comedy in between these is Richard Pryor and Bill Cosby with like their two couples and everything goes wrong with their vacation. Did you look at the gauge like I told you to? I looked at the gauge more than I looked at the road. I ran off the road. I did not run off the gauge. So if you looked at the gauge, it wouldn't have overheated. I mean, looking at the gauge real good stops it from overheating? No, but you've got to speak up. You've got to say, hey, the gauge says we're overheating. This is not the kind of news that you keep to yourself. But to put it simply, even though I explained the whole movie, it's a day in the life of all these people who are staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Check out this movie if you can, California Suite. To Neil Simon's California Suite. Number 24 on this list is another one of those movies, What's Up, Doc? This little picture we're making today is, um, What's Up, Doc? Called What's Up, Doc. See what I mean? It goes boom and then comes back. And you don't have to get out of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, what's the word I say? Isn't it? Action. Oh, action. We rented this from the library. It was one of those ones we put in the stack. And we watched it, and we absolutely loved it. It's a Peter Bondognovich movie. You might remember him from the current film, It, Chapter 2, where he plays the director who says, eh, the ending sucked. He directed this movie. I love this movie. Um, What's Up, Doc? is just uh, full. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. 
It's in my top 20 favorite movies of all time as well. Um, I, I actually I just I love this movie. It makes me laugh every single time. <laughs> oh my god, just thinking about it. I'm just thinking about the scene in the movie where the, throughout the movie he keeps throwing out these golf clubs. And it cracks me up because I think the amount of golf club changes. Like He keeps throwing them out. Check this movie out. I really love it. Um, it should be available like on Second Spin and maybe it's available on digital. But yeah, check out What's Up Doc. It's fantastic. I love this movie. One of my favorite comedies of all time. So, yep. Yeah. No <laughs> Number 25 on this movie list is Monster Squad. Look at that big scary monster! And now the reason why Monster Squad is on this list is because around the same time I made the list, I had just made my Dark Universe starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as Van Helsing. Van Helsing will face an enemy that never dies. I've been waiting for you. I wanted to have clips of the creature from the Black Lagoon and there wasn't really an updated one except in this movie. And Monster Squad was one of those movies I was read about in magazines while growing up. When I was younger I would read Empire Magazine. It was included in the top 10 best special effects done by Stan Winston, which was The Mummy. <laughs> Breath. Which is really cool. I don't even know how they did that, but it's, it's really fantastic. But yeah, that's the reason why it's on this list. And I would recommend this movie to everybody because it's a good Halloween movie. Underrated, you know, little monster movie. And um, if you like those old universal monsters like Wolfman, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, check this out. It's really fun. <laughs> Monster Squad. Wolfman's gone So number 26 on this movie list is My Science Project. In 1955, an extraordinary object landed on Earth. Get rid of it. In 1985, seniors at Kit Carson High... Hey, school tax jellyfish, come on, come on, come on. ...were working on their science projects when Mike Harmon discovered the engine. I won't let this thing run inside. Unlet it. He fixed it. Yeah. Unless your project is Dino Supreme, you both get D's. Hey, I'll take it. And he called it My Science Project. This one sort of has like a, like, you know, dates back to younger Frank in the 90s. In my first video, I think I talked about Trespass, where I would go through the VHS styles, you know, and watch the horror movies. Like, ooh, I'm scared to look at the, you know, the VHS, you know, covers. But my science project was one of those ones where I would go down the aisle of like the sci-fi one, and then there was like this one, my science project. I was like, "Ooh, what's this?" I looked in the back, and I believe there was a dinosaur on it. I know there must have been, so I rented it as a kid just because of that. It's been a while since I've watched my science project. I think the last time I watched it was when I was in college. It's one of those ones I watch almost like every ten years, and I forget what it's about, and I watch it again. The reason why I recommended it to Stuart just because I wanted to see his opinion on it, and like, what do you think of this movie? It's an okay movie. I don't want to say it's the best, you know, it's, it's not really memorable, but you know, it, it was memorable to me so much that I actually used the T-Rex in my Jurassic World 1978 trailer just because I really like the T-Rex. That was so cool. It was way before Carnosaur and Jurassic Park and I really liked the effects that they used in that movie. So that's my science project. You know, check it out if you want to. You don't have to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Science project. Oh, God. We're almost there. Hang on. Oh, my God. Holy. Lions don't do this. Lions never had a lair like this. They're doing it for the pleasure. <laughs> Number 27 on this movie list is The Ghost and the Darkness. This movie came out in 1996, and the reason why it's on this list is because when I was a kid, I was a huge Val Kilmer mark. Um, when I was younger, I would watch the shit out of, you know, Tombstone. I was a huge fan of that movie. I was a huge fan of Batman Forever. He was my Batman when I was a kid. Like, Val Kilmer is the best. He is awesome. 
I would watch him in anything. So when I was a kid, I saw this guy in a poster. I was like, ooh, I want to see that movie. And I don't know if I did. I might have. This might be one of those movies where I watched as a kid and had to watch it through my fingers. I don't remember. Um, or even my family might have seen it without me and then kind of told me about it. But it might have been one of those movies. But yeah, even Val Kilmer and The Saint came out a year after this, which was like 97. And then Island of Dr. Monroe. Things like that. But still, I was a huge Val Kilmer fan when I was a kid. And I always wanted to see this. So a couple years ago, um, there was this store closing down in my town. I think it was 26. 16, 2017, called Record Theater. It's record Theater, the area's longest-serving independent record store, will sell the last of its stock on Main Street as the historic go-to store gets ready to close doors for the last time. From cassette tapes and vinyl records to CDs and DVDs, the sale will go until everything's gone. And like a lot of them were like $5.99 or lower. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So I started going through all the DVDs. And one of them was The Ghost in the Darkness. I was like, yes! Oh my god! I finally get to watch this. And I really enjoyed it. How many do you think they've killed? Hundred. Maybe more. Do we wish the world to think that the builders of the British Empire are afraid because of a few minor difficulties with the local wildlife? It's about like a killer lion in the Africa, and it seems like he's a ghost, like he doesn't exist, like because he could get through the traps and do all those things, and it's weird, you know, like they clear everything out of here, they're setting traps over here, but the lion attacks over here, like he somehow knew what they were gonna do, and it's it's weird, it's like a, he's a spirit, like you know who's upset that they're building the train through Africa, something like that, you know, I could totally see this movie existing in the 70s or 60s, it was like Michael Caine. Or I could see them doing, like, a, a better version with, like, Robert Pattinson or something nowadays with, like, maybe um, Charlie Hunnam. Like, um, that um, movie, what's it called? Uh, Z. Uh, Lost City of Z. I could see them doing, like, a dramatic version of that, like, with this movie. And it just, it's so 90s. The devil has come to Samo! I am the devil. Hopefully Stuart likes it. I could see Stuart going like, eh. It's garbage. It's garbage. I hated it. I hated this movie. It's garbage. It's garbage. You know, I, I watched it and it's kind of garbage. And now I need you to watch it so I can confirm that it's garbage. So anyways, yes, it is garbage. It's garbage. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Stuart. Hopefully you're still watching. Anyway. The Ghost and the Darkness. Now, can you control your fear? <laughs> Number 28 on this movie list is Sudden Death. Tonight, 17,000 hockey fans have been taken hostage. Enough bombs have been planted in this building to stop all the clocks in the hemisphere. But only one of them knows it. I'm going to try to stop you. I know where the bombs are, so I know where you're going. Then come and get me. Now, Sudden Death is one of those movies I don't remember what came first, like the chicken or the egg, you know what I mean? I don't remember if I wanted to see this because this was a diehard ripoff, or... I wanted to see this because I saw the trailer and I wanted to use it for a project. It could be one of those two things, but let's go with both. Why not both? John Claude Van Damme plays a security guard or police officer, forget which, doesn't really matter. He's inside a stadium that's rigged to blow up by Powers Booth, and he's holding the president or governor or whoever the fuck. The vice president is being held hostage in the owner's box. I don't care, it doesn't matter. He's holding the guy from Flubber hostage. That agent's name was Eddie Kaline. He has a five-year-old boy, a three-year-old little girl, and his wife's pregnant. I'll send a card. And I remember watching the trailer online like We're still evaluating the situation. They want money, a lot of it. Give it to us. Do not try any kind of rescue. Do you understand me? Oh my god, I have to watch that movie. We are gonna do this by the numbers. In a hockey game being held hostage, like a diehard situation, everything happens that should happen. He fights a mascot, he ends up on the ice, the sky thing opens, a helicopter crashes in there. He does his kicks, he does his splits, it's awesome, I really love Sudden Death, it's one of the better Die Hard ripoffs, and I think it's one of the better John claude Van Damme movies, I love it, and the trailer is awesome, check out the trailer, if you don't want to check out the movie, at least check out the trailer, it's great. Sudden Death. So number 29 on this movie list is an affair to remember. If you've ever been in love, or ever hoped to be in love, here's a story you'll love with all your heart. Now this one... I watched because I love the movie Sleepless in Seattle. And if you've seen the movie Sleepless in Seattle, it's a big giant thing in that movie. Oh, it's so amazing when he comes to see her. Because he 
doesn't even notice that she doesn't get up to say hello. And he's very bitter. And you think that he's just gonna walk out the door and never know why. She's just lying there, you know, like on the couch with this blanket over her shriveled little legs. And so are you all right? She's fine. And suddenly he goes, oh, I like saw the painting. And he, he like goes to the bedroom. And he looks and he comes out and he looks at her and he kind of just they know and then they hug and it's so that's a chick's movie. But still, it's one of those romantic movies where it's like, oh, they're going to fall in love at the end. I don't know. It's so, it's that sentimental thing at the end. It's like, oh, they got together. It's, you know, you want to see that in movies. And I like seeing that in movies. Aww. I like that in the movies where you're like, oh, they ended up together. It's great. So, yeah, I would recommend <laughs> Fair to Remember. It's really well done, and it's, uh, it's really good. I like it. <laughs> We get to number 30 on this movie list. Holy smokes, we're finally there. Number 30 on this movie list is Mad Monster Party. Mad Monster Party! Now, Mad Monster Party is not actually a movie. <gasps> what, Frank? <laughs> um, it's an actually a Rankin Bass holiday special. If you guys recognize that name, they're the guys who did Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, Year Without a Santa Claus, Santa Claus Coming to Town, Frosty the Snowman. Uh, holiday specials like that, like Peter Cottontail, I don't know if you guys remember that. It's one of my personal favorites. Um, they did that. They also did Mad Monster Party, which I had no idea that they actually did a Halloween special, but it kind of makes sense. Of course, they would have a Halloween special if they did Christmas and Easter and probably St. Patrick's Day. I don't know. But yeah, they did a lot of these stop-motion movies, and of course, I've always been a fan. And I only recently discovered this, probably two, three years ago now, um... I was getting back into the Halloween spirit, starting liking Halloween movies again, and, you know, horror movies. I'm like, I want to do something cool. So I went to trickortreatstudios.com, and I started looking at Halloween masks because I wanted to be like a creepy clown or something like that, maybe get a new leather face mask. Not sure, but I was doing research and looking at masks, and I saw masks of the scientists and Dracula and the monster, and I was like... What the heck is that? Is that like based on a cereal or something? And I looked it up, but I saw that Rankin Bass had their own Halloween special. I was like, oh, that's cool. So I went online, ordered it. I think I got it off Amazon, maybe eBay, because this thing's out of print. It has like all the classic Universal monsters. It has the Bride of Frankenstein, but this time she's voiced by Phyllis Diller. Also starring Phyllis Diller as the hostess with the least. <laughs> And you got, like, uh, the Frankenstein's monster, Dracula, Invisible Man. It's really fun. They squeezed everything in here. You got the mummy, creature from the Black Lagoon. You got some spiders. You got dancing skeletons. And you got Wolfman. You got the guy who talks like these. She noticed me. For the first time, she noticed me. Oh, she makes me. Oh, I forgot that actor. Yeah, this is Peter Lorre speaking. But you know who I'm talking about. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Thanks for your interest. I think he's in that movie, um, M. Oh, I thought you were magnificent in M. I'm not sure. Stuart probably knows more than me. He probably knows the guy I'm talking about. He's like, yeah, I know that guy. I watched all his Criterion movies. Poetry, my friend. That is poetry. Anyway, enjoyed the f*** out of this movie. And I remember watching this. I'm like, the main character sounds like Jimmy Stewart. Fra Fra Francesca, Francesca. <laughs> oh, the shock. <laughs> You're hysterical. Calm down. I, I hate to do this. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, Felix. Oh, you're not mad? Oh, Felix. I think you're still hysterical. That was the whole gag. It was supposed to be like Jimmy Stewart meeting the monsters because the guy was doing a Jimmy Stewart impression. I was like, holy shit, that's amazing. Felix Flanken has a Jimmy Stewart type voice. Lincoln and Washington looking down on me. And I, I thought, wow. <laughs> Check it out if you guys can get a copy. I'm not sure if it's even available, but 
if you guys can and have a chance to watch it, check out Mad Monster Party. I think it's a lot of fun. So that concludes today's video. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Stuart, hopefully this gives you a better understanding on why I picked these movies on this list. There's a lot of good ones here. A lot of them that were out of print and I had to send you a digital copy of, like Mad Monster Party and um, An Affair to Remember. And I believe even um, My Science Project. I had to send you a copy from the library I got. But yeah, a lot of good movies here. Check them out if you haven't checked them out already, especially like Treasure Planet and, you know... Monster Squad. There's a lot of good ones that are coming up for the holiday season. It's almost Halloween, guys. Check out Monster Squad and Mad Monster Party. They're a lot of fun. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time.